All right. Now that we got everything set up, let's just keep moving forward because now we're going to go ahead and start texturing the clothing. All right. So I'm going to jump to the shirt real quick and you can see that I have a very simple material here. All right. Now, if you are just jumping in and quickly trying to pick up or follow along, what I'm going to do is just create this empty group. OK, and create this empty group and I'll just quickly get back to where I was. So I'll add a black mask to this folder. And then in this folder now, I will go ahead and set this to only have the shirt in this layer. OK, so you want to hit this geometry tab here and select the shirt. OK, so it goes ahead and does that, but we can't see anything because we don't have any materials in there. So I'm just going to grab fabric rough here in our just standard algorithmic materials and drag that over and put that in our shirts group. And there you go. This is only affecting the shirt. You can see that I have one for collar and I have one obviously for shorts. All right. So that's how you set up a mask um, quick and easy. And anything that's inside this folder will only affect the shirt. All right. So I'll go back to brush here. And on this fabric rough, we're just going to go ahead now and select that material. Go to the properties and we're going to increase the scale or the tiling on this. So obviously we can go pretty high to like 10 and it almost becomes non-existent unless you really get in there. And I want this to hold up from a pretty good distance and also look realistic. Um, and I'll go ahead and maybe just do four. You can see that it, we can see the fabric detail uh, coming from a fair distance. And that's, that's really all I'm looking for, okay? So the next thing, and you know, you can certainly change the material properties. So if you wanna make this a little bit more blue, you can change the color, lighten it up a little bit, and this uh, works fine. So this is just a standard algorithmic material or a standard substance mat material, okay? The next thing I wanna do is we can, you know, look at the shirt, it's okay, but it's fairly flat. All right, I didn't use any cloth sim. I didn't do anything to this to really push the form. So we can do that through texturing, all right? The next thing I'll do is inside of this shirts folder, create a new fill layer, okay? So I'm gonna create this fill layer and you can see that it just kind of overrides it. And now we have all of these PBR materials overriding it just like it would in a standard layering uh, setup. Okay, so I want to only use height because I want to make it look like we have fabric folds and wrinkles on our shirt. So simply go to height and alt click height and you can see it disables all the other materials or all the other channels besides height. So we're now going to use a fairly powerful tool within substance. There are things like procedurals, generators that kind of help you know, streamline the workflow. So you don't have to do a lot of hand painting and it uses all of these bake mesh maps that we uh, baked at the beginning of the project, all right? So we have this layer, I will go ahead and call it wrinkles. And then with, wrin with wrinkles here, I'm gonna add a black mask. So you can see that the workflow that I typically like to use is heavily mask driven, okay? and in this fill in this layer here it's just height i want to actually move this in towards the negative value because we want this to start deforming and if we don't have anything any value here we won't see anything change so i go back to my black mask and with the black mask enabled i'm going to just add a another fill layer so add fill and then now we can see that it's you know looking for something here. So that's where we're gonna go over here to our uh, shelf at the bottom, and we're going to find procedurals. And there you go, look at all of these different procedurals that you can start to utilize. Now, just so you get a sense of how this work works, I will go ahead and just simply grab brick generator. Drag that over, left mouse button, hold, and put that on grayscale. And you can see something start to happen, okay? Well, what I need to do is increase the scale. So set it to like 10, and there you go. Take a look at that. We are using this generator, excuse me, this procedural 
to create a tileable pattern that's going on top of our fabric, all right? Now, this is just so you can get a good sense of how this works. It's very easy to see. What I want to do now is you can see that there are other things like clouds that are a little bit more subtle, right? So if I go to the, the mask again, you can simply drag these over and overwrite whatever was previously there. So now you can see, all right, we're starting to get some more texture and variation. You can mess with the scale to, in, to change the size of those patterns. And above all, we can go back to the parent or the main fill and push and pull this further if we wanted to. So notice how now I'm just at negative 0.3 and we're getting some nice detail there. And I can go the other direction and kind of push it out the other way so it's maybe a little bit puffier. Okay, so I will go back and I am I like where we landed with this creases soft. So this gives us just nice subtle wrinkles. So I'm going to grab creases soft and left mouse button drag that over grayscale. And then you can see that it is applied to our shirt. Now it's running horizontally, which I personally don't want. So I'm going to also lower the tiling so it's larger uh, wrinkles and folds. And then we can use rotation. And I'm going to rotate this simply 90 degrees. All right. So there. So you can start to see this coming in. And you can start to see how this is looking on our character. Now, you may get some weird seams uh, here. If you do, I would simply change from projection, from UV, and it uses what's called triplanar, and triplanar does a good job blending seams. So if you're having that issue, but I actually seem to be fine using UV projection, so I'm gonna stick with that, okay? Then I wanna go back to this here, maybe lower this a bit. To, you know, maybe we'll keep this about four, uh, four scale repeat, and then which yours is going to vary depending on your UV size. And I'm going to go back here and actually move this back. There we go. So we get this nice subtle look here, and it looks like it's soft now instead of looking very stiff. All right. So we can do the same thing that we did here. I can just kind of copy this. Right, what I did with the wrinkles and copy and do that to the shorts. Okay, and I can go ahead and hit control V and paste that right in there. All right, now I want to make sure that's inside the groups or inside the shorts folder here, but then I want to make sure to go in and just change these. I mean, honestly, it has a nice random uh, that we can do to change the seed so it doesn't look like it's too too similar. So that actually looks like it is pretty nice. And maybe we increase or decrease the scale, you know, so it doesn't look too identical. Maybe instead of four, we do three. So we get this nice waviness here. And, and maybe we even go back and lower the height. So it's not as intense as the as the shirt. So we'll make it looks like it makes it look like a different material property. Okay. The other thing that is nice is to be able to look at this uh, and, you know, hold shift and shift right click and then you can move the lighting just to kind of see how it holds up with that light moving. So that's nice. I, I like how it's holding up in the the different lighting scenarios. So we'll stick with this. Um, the other thing is I simply used a fabric rough aligned here for the shorts. So. Um, that is like similar to the rough except it's just kind of a straight pattern and it added some nice variation So these are kind of running up and down um, Versus horizontal for the shirt. So again, it makes it look like a different like it was cut from a different cloth or cut from a different fabric Which is exactly what we want All right, so now that we've gone through and created some fabric and cloth detail using procedurals, we now want to go ahead and actually paint in some custom wrinkles to have that full control. So what we want to do is go ahead and into our shirts folder, create a new fill layer, and just drop that into our shirt folder. And I'll just call this wrinkles paint. All right. 
And then from here, I wanna go ahead and add a black mask. Now remember, all we want to affect is the height. So I will alt click height, so that becomes the only enabled channel in the material. And then I will lower the height so we can actually see some deformation. Maybe we'll just stick around 0.2. So let's go ahead to the mask now, and we want to add a paint, all right? Now, there are definitely some things that we can go into. We can grab some alphas within Substance Painter and paint, you know, add them to the brush. So if you wanted to, let's say, for example, I can grab like this handprint here, drag that to the alpha in the brush, and then now you can see there it is. And if I hold control, right click, you can see I can increase the size. Now, if you're just getting used to the controls, you can also just hit right click and you have size, flow, stroke opacity. So flow is like the opacity of the actual brush stamp that's tied to pen, pen pressure. And then you have stroke opacity, which is the opacity of the entire um, brush stroke. Okay. And then spacing is then here we can see that we can increase the spacing. Now, all we really want to do is essentially just go ahead and stamp into here. So we're gonna be putting in some wrinkles here. So you can see by using this, we go ahead and get this handprint. Well, that's not really what I want. So let's go ahead and bring in some custom alphas. So you can grab alphas from anywhere and bring them into Substance Painter. So a couple of things that we wanna look for are these types of brushes and fabric folds, all right? So I, you know, you can find some on polygon.com, which is a great resource, and they have a lot of free brushes and stitches, and we're gonna be adding some stitches to our models as well. So you can get started and find some there. There's also a lot of, you know, free resources. Um, I mean, those are free as well, but here on Gumroad, there's some good alphas here. This one's from Max Durskin. So he's got a, you know, a good pack here of 10. Um, on Gumroad, and you can just find them on really anywhere on the internet. And then of course, don't forget to check out my Gumroad. All right, so let's head back to Substance Painter. And what I wanna do is we have to import this resource, okay? Now, if you go ahead to File, Import Resource. So I will go ahead and add resources. So you can see that pops up and I've already downloaded these alphas and put them in a folder and you can see that I have a couple variations. What I'll go ahead and do is go to Polygon Fabrics here and I will just grab um, some that are free and some that I purchased. So just so you can see how to set these up, go ahead and hit open. Now you're going to get this when it's going to say, hey, where do you want to put these? Um, well, first we need to tell them that these are all alphas okay so quickly go ahead and set all of these to alpha and then import your resource you can import it into your shelf the project or current session so current session is just what we're doing right now and once we close substance painter it will be gone project is just in this project and then shelf will add it permanently into the substance painter shelf i know i'm going to be using these for a lot of texturing later so i will go ahead and just do shelf so then hit import Okay, and give that a second to import. And you see it's going ahead and it's pretty quick. So then what I want to do is go to our shelf down here. I'll actually bring this up so you can see it a little bit easier here. Bring this shelf up and then here are all the alphas that I just brought in. So just like with the handprint, we can go ahead and grab these and start experimenting with it. So here's brush fabric clothing armpits, I can go ahead and click left drag and drop that on the alpha, or I can go ahead and type in the brush and then find the brush from here, all right? So with that now, you can see I have this alpha. Now, you may have just the preview with the outline, so it kind of looks like this. When doing wrinkles, I typically like to do the full preview, and you can see that at the top left of the UI here. And of course, you have crosshair. Um, but since we're kind of stamping, we want to get a good sense of where this is going to be. So like I said, control right click is going to allow you to change the size. Control, uh, I should say control right click and left to right, drag that left to right, okay? Then control right click up and down is the size and then control left click is the opacity. And then you can see I can change different things here to allow the, to get some different controls. And then lastly, control left click up and down will rotate it. 
okay so we you know change kind of the, the flow a bit since i'm using just my mouse i'll go ahead and keep this flow at 100 so basically that's full opacity of the imprint and then stroke opacity at 100 and then i can change that here so with that being said let's just go ahead and start adding some custom wrinkles okay so you can see now I can go ahead and start adding them in here. And this is kind of the armpit area. And if they're a little bit subtle right now, you can go ahead and go back to your fill layer here and de decrease the height. So that starts to kind of come in quite a bit more, okay? So maybe we can keep that about 0.4 and go back and do some more painting here. All right, so that's the control of being able to do this procedurally. And then of course, if we wanted to experiment with different paint layers, we can just add another paint layer, mix and match, brush, mix and match brushes. Um, here's another one for the armpits. I would recommend getting a few of them so you can have, uh, you know, so you can be able to add some variation. I am of course making sure that I'm not using symmetry here. So I'll turn on my paint layer, of course. And then I will go ahead now and you can see that I can add some more wrinkles here to add to this, okay? So I can kind of stamp some things there. And if I wanted to, we can see what kind of brushes that we have. We have one that's kind of right here on the back. I like this big back one here. And I'm gonna make this much, much bigger. And you know, you can kind of change this a bit here, rotate it, and go ahead and stamp that in, okay? And we can go to the front now and shift right click and you can see I can grab some more and here's some for the, the legs so we can add to the shorts. Well, that's a quick and easy way to add some custom wrinkles to our character. Maybe some here. So we have some other fabric folds here that we can mess with as well. And maybe if we wanted to add and give a little bit of love to the shorts, we can. So I'm gonna take this layer, Control D, drop this into shorts, okay? Bring this up here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the mask. And then I'll go ahead and add a paint to the mask. And then now we can start painting on the shorts, all right? And if I go ahead and check the layer, the fill layer, everything seems to be good there. We're just using height, we have the black, and then now we have our paint. And we can go ahead now and if I hold shift, or sorry, control, and just kind of rotate these a bit. And you can see that I can start to add that uh, in there. Now, you can, of course, change the direction. If I wanted these to come out, I absolutely can, okay? So I go back to my mask, and now you can see that they're starting to come out. So again, it just kind of helps give us a little bit of detail here. Maybe I flip and rotate these the other way. And I would, of course, consult some reference here um, that you have, you know, as you're going through in painting. And then one more, I like this um, clothing crotch. So we can add some right about here. I can make sure to bring this brush size down with control right click and then control left click up and down, I can go ahead and rotate that, okay? And we can kind of drop that in there. And there we go, so we get some nice subtle effects. And now that we've got that, that's looking pretty solid and it, we're getting some good, nice subtle details in there. And I'm really happy with the overall results. So we can continue to refine this, but these are the techniques that I'll be using to continue to refine and finish detailing the texturing of the clothing. So the next technique that I'll use is uh, going through doing the boots, gloves, and adding some generators and some stitching. All right. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and it was helpful. Uh, always appreciate it. A like and subscribe and drop a comment down below if I missed anything, guys So and gals. So uh, thanks again. Bye.